Hi everyone, welcome back to the course. Now I know I said in the first episode I wasn't going to go into the details of the schematic and here I am showing the schematic. But as I was thinking about it, really the schematic can do a lot to inform layout, especially if it's a well done schematic. And I think as you guys go through this course, being able to make a good schematic, a readable schematic, is a key skill and it does help make the layout easier. And this example that you've been given for Teach Me PCB, this is something to aspire to. This is what, whenever you're gonna do a schematic, you really wanna have this type of organization. So if you look here on the first sheet, it's just a block diagram. It's just showing how the main system is interconnected. The subsequent sheets then go into defining those connections. But what's really nice is, if you look at sheet two, this is the MCU design. You know that if you form a group here, and you transfer that group to the board, these are all components that need to be together. And one of the key, key rules of thumb for PCB design is try to keep your connections as short as possible. By having your schematic organized in this way, where you know what components have to be close to each other, you're aiding that goal of keeping the connections as short as possible. So from a simple perspective, what you would do is for each of these sheets, you might try forming the group, transferring it over to the board, and then they're laying out these small sections, which you can then combine together to form the finished design. So that's a way of taking a large task and breaking it down into smaller pieces and still getting a good result. Now, depending on how the sheets are organized, we may see that we can do certain things to speed up the process. So let's take a look here at the power. You have the entire power section here. This is good. You would want to keep all of this together as well. The LED buzzer section. Again, we see all of these are interconnected. They're all close to each other. Now, actually, if you look at this one, there's no reason that these technically have to be all together. Because if you notice, they're not really sharing any signals here. So the LED indicator can maybe be in a separate section of the board. The buzzer could then be somewhere else. So here, it's been grouped in a way where it's logical, just because there was probably extra space on the sheet and to not form an extra sheet. But here, now looking at it from a layout perspective, we see that we have this flexibility. And that, that may come into play later when we go to lay it out. So it's good to take a few moments and just look through the schematic as we're doing here and seeing where you have flexibility, where you have things that should stay together or things that you can separate a little bit more. Now here on sheet five, there's an interesting opportunity. It's not, obviously we inherited this schematic. This is something that was given to us to use. But here is something where as you become fluent with fusion electronics, and if you use Eagle, this is a feature that's actually an Eagle and hasn't made it into Fusion Electronics as of this video, but we are working to migrate that. There's a feature called Design Blocks. Now, if you notice, all these switches are set up identically. They have the same schematic design, and they would presumably have the same layout. If one of these was set up as a design block, you could have the schematic portion and the layout portion already defined and then you would just place it in four more times. So that's a really useful feature that's available in Eagle um, that will eventually make its way into Fusion 360. It's not there as of this video, but if you're watching it in the future, go ahead and take a look because it may be in there already. So looking here again, we have these sections where probably these all go together, but this circuitry may go separately. So this is the USB connector here, USB bus C. So this is something that could be probably located somewhere else if needed. And then here we have a connector. So this connector and this component probably go together. Looking at the signals, and again, this is something, like I said, to aspire to. The signals are well documented. So my initial idea that maybe this section could be separate is actually not valid because if you notice, this net here, these two nets, the USB nets, are right here. So again, this is something that we would want to keep together, this entire sheet. So you could form a group that contains the entire sheet and we could transfer it over. Okay, this one's easy. This would all go together. Now here, 
we notice that we have these nets that go to another sheet, this is something to keep in mind because it may also inform what needs to be kept close. Okay, these are signal lines for, for an I squared C bus. Um, these are pretty tolerant and robust, so it's not, we don't want to think, you know, if we have to separate them a little bit, that it'll be a problem. Um, they don't tend to run at super high speed. So there's a little bit more flexibility here, but these are things just that we're thinking about and keeping in mind as we move towards the, the design phase, the layout phase. So here's another sensor. Again, it has all of its connections. We see that it has an SDA and SCL line as well. So we want to keep that in mind. We know that this one and the previous one are on the same bus. So maybe interesting to keep them together. Again, it, th these are things we're, we're just looking at as we go through this process. Later on, we may have to break some of those initial assumptions, but it's good to, to have a game plan. Here we have the RTC again. It's also on the I2C bus. Now, one thing that's really good and, and that I really want to highlight, uh, because again, the folks here at Teach Me PCB have done an excellent job. You notice that in the components that deal with I2C, they're putting in the documentation, okay? Schematics are the hardware, what comments are the code, okay? And not everyone looks at it that way, but it's a good habit to look at and, and to get into. If you think about it, the whole purpose of having a schematic is to be able to very clearly see your design intent and document the flow of your design. So that document function that's something where you can feel free to put in notes, you can put in diagrams of expected signals. You know, a schematic that contains all that information is extremely valuable. And it'll be valuable to yourself, it'll be valuable to a coworker who maybe a few months down the road has to make a revision of the PCB. So any and all pieces of information that you can put in the schematic is just gonna help you and your fellow coworkers in the future. So that's something to, to note in these. So this one, I think, didn't include it, but this one I know does. See? So this information is just invaluable, and it's a good habit to get into. You want to be able to have the schematic document, not just the complete hardware design, but you can even put notes. You can put in diagrams. You can put in waveforms. Um, all of that is possible in Fusion Electronics. And then the last page here, we have the LCD connection. And again, here, we see another good candidate for the future implementation of design blocks in Fusion 360 Electronics. So this is what I wanted to cover in this video. I'm going to call this video Episode Zero. And the idea is, if you have a good schematic, it's just going to make your layout that much easier. And the goals and what constitutes a good schematic, like we saw, having good organization, the design's been broken down into its constituent parts. On the first sheet, you have a block diagram that covers all of the interconnections between these systems for documentation purposes. And we have additional notes on the sheets where the, those notes can be helpful. If you do this in your own schematics, you're going to find that it's a lot easier to do the layout. Now, just as a preview for our next video, I'm going to show you how we can take a group and then transfer that over to the board, okay? So in our next video, we're gonna bring in a new board outline, because we have a, a special one for our badge, and we're gonna work on making the arrangements of these components, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I make a selection, knowing that all of this is gonna be routed together, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on Automate, Run New OP, Okay, we go to the S's. Select schematic group to board group, we hit okay. And what you're gonna see is now it's gonna jump over to the board view and those components have been highlighted. So now what I can do, and I have the move function active. So what I can do, first thing I'm gonna do is turn off air wires because I don't want to accidentally select one of those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, control right click to move the group. And now I've isolated these components. And what I can do is I can now bring them together.
and kind of lay them out as a sub-circuit. Okay, so we're going to be talking more about that in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.